Hi, Orange Girl here with another scrapbooking process video for you today. I am working with Flare from a Flare for Buttons and these great photos. These are photos that my one true love took of the tulips in my mother and father-in-law's house in their yard. Actually, it's not their house. It's in their yard. I'm using this cut file from Just Nick of Butterflies because they matched these flare buttons perfectly. I thought this was perfect for a nice spring layout. That one says emerge and then there are these two butterflies. The butterflies have a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue in them so I grabbed some papers that would have those colors and I added yellow into the mix because they're some of my favorite colors. And all of these papers are from the Chamel collection. Um, I'm going to back Okay, but I'm speeding this up because I'm going to back these butterflies with some of these papers. I usually just trace around them, then do a little fussy cutting, and glue the back on. Um, I ended up changing my mind as to which, which one I wanted that to go behind, so I, um, I traced it twice. But you get the idea. So this is these papers are from Chamel's Little by Little collection. And I love that beautiful floral and then I use some of the pink and some of the yellow paper as well. <clears throat> so I move those out of the way. They're totally in the way because now I'm going to just go ahead and glue them down. I just use, I use um, Scotch Quick Dry or maybe it's called Tacky Glue now. Um, it comes in a big bottle and I use this fine line bottle. I, I put the big bottle into the fine line bottle to go ahead. Um, it just applies much easier. It's a nice applicator. So I know I'm going to use this white cardstock. I started with the idea that, that I wasn't going to, um, that I was going to use one of the patterned papers, but then I ended up, I don't know, partly while I was doing that, I was like, eh, I'm totally going to use white cardstock. You know you're going to use it, so why not just commit to it? So I did. I You saw me put a little, few little marks there with a pencil. I'm adding gesso to my white cardstock to let it dry and then I'm going to go back and continue um, backing the cut file. I just wanted to give it a chance to dry as I was working with um, this I, and I cut I cut most of that out but you can see now my cut file is backed as much as I'm going to back it and now I am using a gelato on dried paper, dried gesso. And then a little bit of white, or white, a little bit of watercolor. And I'm not actually applying this. You can't really see it, but I'm applying it to packaging. There it is right there. I use this packaging technique that a lot of scrapbookers use because it just, it creates a more messy look. It doesn't have breast strokes. Um, I just like the way it looks a little bit better, and it's super easy to apply. So what, I'm, what you're seeing me do here is decide not to use that color of pink. It was just entirely too bright for me. I wanted a more pastel look. So I went and grabbed my watercolors and I'm going to use a pink that's nearly that bright uh, with water and then I'm going to add some white to it to make it look just a little bit more pastel. What I should have done is I should have taken that water or that uh, whatever it was that I didn't use, the gelato that I didn't use, the pink, and just put it on another piece of paper to use for something else or put it in an art journal or whatever and not wasted it. But I knew I was filming, so I went ahead and wasted it. So that pink is much better. It doesn't match perfectly, but I didn't really care if it matched per perfectly. I just wanted it to um, be closer and, and more pastel and softer than what that gelato was. So I end up using this Heidi Swap Butter I think it's called Butter, Color Shine, the color I believe is Butter. So I'm using a mist, and I'm using watercolor, and I'm using gelato on this. And I planned on just using gelato, but um, I just, the colors match better, and so that's what I ended up using. So you see me put the cut file on and take it away, and put the cut file on and take it away. And mainly I'm just like, where do I want this? Do I have enough yellow? Do I have enough pink? Do I have enough blue? And so on as I go. And so this really doesn't take all that long. Now I did speed up the video, but really, if you know what you're wanting to do, this is a pretty quick process. So all I'm doing here now at the end is I'm taking and um, using those same colors to add with some water to add 
a few little um, sprinkles of those colors, splatters, I guess, over the top just to give it even more texture. So what, you're, what I'm going to do off camera next is that you won't see is I'm going to cut around this a little bit and then add a um, border around the outside um, using one of those Chamel papers. It's blue, I believe. I can't remember what the paper's called. I'm sorry. But it's a, a pastel blue with a stripe on it. And I end up using that as kind of a border on the top and on the side and I stitch all around the outside and you'll be able to see that I think that that's what I said right here I'm deciding that yeah I, I had just taken this picture of my daughter and I really wanted to use that photo but I'm like go with your original plan this is really about spring the butterflies the flowers it all works together so now off camera I have um, stitched that down and then I found just sitting out it was just sitting out <laughs> this Maggie Holmes paper from the Chasing Dreams collection it just happened to be sitting out and I was like whoa those butterflies are perfect <laughs> so I grabbed it and puppy cut a few of those out I'm not going to do it all in front of you but you get the idea I am just cutting the antenna off I don't really care that none of the butterflies that are in the cut file have an antenna and it would have been too hard to to cut around those and it didn't really need it for for what this is so i just cut those off and didn't worry about it this adds a little bit of black because it's outlined kind of in a dark i think it's black color which is also in my button so i wanted to add some black or whatever to it and i also knew i was going to use these alphas for my title so these alphas are pink fresh studio and um, I use them for the word spring. I really, I've used these in a lot of layouts lately. I have two sets of them and I just love them. And then I'm trying to decide, do I want emergence of spring or spring emerges or what do I want? So you'll see me change this here in a minute, but I, I started by emergence of spring and then I, I delete it, move spring, not delete because that would be on a computer. Seriously, I take it off. I struggle a bit taking it off actually I have to get out my tweezers but I end up taking emergence off changing it to emerges and moving spring up and putting emerges underneath and then that left me room for a little bit of journaling so I went ahead and <clears throat> did that it just worked out a little bit better so once I stop messing with the file you're gonna see me decide wow you should probably glue some of this down <laughs> because everything you see here other than the fact that I have put I've matted the white background paper with the black or excuse me the blue striped paper I have glued nothing so I'm like you should probably glue some things down so as soon as I get this title figured out then I start I decide I'm going to start gluing some things down or actually I don't <laughs> oh I do I do I was thinking I, I went to stay tangle thread next but no I do I do start gluing some of this down and I am just for the butterflies that I fussy cut out I'm just doing the body and then that way there's a little bit of dimension with the wings that are kind of sticking up a little bit and then the actual cut file this glue works really well so wherever you glue it down it stays but I don't want to glue every little bit of it because I know I'm going to put some tangled thread or other things behind it. And I just want some options. So that's kind of what it's going to look like there. And now I'm going to add tangled thread behind. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make like these little nests, I guess, behind the flare buttons. I'm going to use pink. I'm going to use blue. And I'm going to use yellow. Because why? Because that's what I used for my colors. And so I'm going to start with that. I did struggle a little bit with my, my thread, which I have done the last couple of um, videos. And it's really funny because when I normally do this, I don't really struggle with the thread at all. But then as soon as I turn on my camera, I cannot get the thread to work. So whatever, it ends up working in the end and I like how it turned out. So it doesn't really matter, but um, you're going to watch me struggle a little bit. So I, you know, it really is funny that 
it all started, my ideas for this really all started with those buttons. <laughs> the um, And I'm not just saying this because it's a flare for buttons layout. It truly, truly is. I saw those three when I got them in the mail and I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to use these because it's such about emerging, spring emerging and it's starting. And so I was like, I am going to use this with a spring layout. And, and I ended up doing that eventually. So what you're seeing me do here is back my photos with a layer of pattern paper from the same Chamel collection, um, little by little, and using some of the same pattern papers um, that I used to back the cut file, which I don't always use the same ones, but it just worked out really well to do that. So, and I'm gluing it together a little bit. And what I should have done at this point is I should have gone ahead and glued all of that down, but I don't. I don't know why. I have no idea. But it, it turns out okay, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm getting my flare glued down, and then I decide I'm going to add a few things that I see, like my eye gets drawn to a couple of things over on the left that you see there, and so um, I stop. As soon as I do this tissue paper, I go, oh, and I kind of get distracted a little bit, kind of like have a swirl moment or whatever, and decide um, <laughs> not to glue these down yet, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding some other little embellishments which it all turns out fine, but it could have been bad because it includes a little bit of black splatter paint. And when I do that, I almost always smear it unless I do the black splatter paint at the very, very end. But it worked out for this layout, which is great. I had one last month that I did that I had to start the whole thing, <laughs> the whole process almost over. I hadn't gotten that far, but I gotten far enough that it, it hurt a little bit, <laughs> it stung a little bit because I had, there was no way of covering it up, but whatever. So I'm using the puffy stickers that is from the Shimmel collection. Um, I started with some hearts and now I'm adding some flowers in those same colors, just kind of scattered about the page. Um, and then I'm going to add these enamel dots. And when I first do it, I'm like, is that black or is it navy blue? So you see me kind of checking because um, the lighting wasn't great. It's been pretty rainy around here lately. So <clears throat> I decide it's black. So I leave them. And then I'm adding this black <laughs> splatter and I should not have done this, but it turned out okay. It turned out okay. But like now I'm getting a ruler out. Like how could I have not, oh, I could have really messed up here, but I didn't. So I get the ruler out and I go ahead and use the, the T-square to draw my lines to write my journaling. And my journaling is pretty simple. It's just, it's just about how these are the first, first flowers of spring and um, Larry's tulips always let us know that spring is on its way or it's here or something like that. Um, this was truly, truly one of those just, um, I saw the pictures that my one true love took and I'm like, I have to scrap those. And my story is really simple. It's just how spring is here. And this is the first sign and we're always good and we're glad in Iowa <laughs> to see the snow go and see the spring happen so now I decide to start gluing that down <laughs> after you saw <laughs> things flying across the page there as I was doing my journaling then of course um, the other thing that always happens <laughs> when I am uh, when I get my camera out to take a process video is I run out of um, uh, tape in my in my adhesive tape runner <laughs> so I had to refill that you'd think I would learn and just do all of that ahead of time but no 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 I gotta do it on camera um, I'm going ahead here and I'm adding there's some phrase stickers that are in the Chamel collection I'm gonna add those in a few of those I, I move a few around I don't use them all that I start with but then I get my Tim Holtz phrase stickers out that I love very much and I use on a lot of layouts. In fact, I think I have at least two of these um, um, packages of them. And I use a lot of things that say things like, you know, see possibility everywhere, live in the moment, I feel lucky, breathe, <laughs> those sorts of things. Um, just kind of like after winter, this is the time to do those things and make sure that you're seeing the possibility everywhere or whatever. So I'm adding a few fried stickers and that is about it. Um, this was really fun to make. I really enjoyed it. The, the close-ups are coming here. So hit the subscribe button if you like the process video. Send me 
a comment or two if you had any questions. Um, thanks for stopping by. Check out the blog link in the comments to see how you can purchase these and other flair from a Flare for Buttons Etsy shop. And thanks a lot for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon.